today is quite different than the neighborhood of 2006. In addition to more than 21 million square feet of commercial office space, the district also boasts more than 570 ground floor businesses, a commercial vacancy rate hovering just around 6%, a low retail vacancy rate of approximately 5%, 3,485 hotel rooms and over 600 rooms planned or in development. 230 of the finest dining establishments to meet every taste and price point. 38 ground floor businesses focused on interior design, decor, and home furnishings. Um, but the 2030 partnership flat iron is very special. You have obviously a great neighborhood in which to work, um, and it gets more interesting, more diverse uh, area, as you know, because you're part of it. It's flourishing with new businesses, um, co-working spaces, startups, all the tech, advertising, marketing, information firms, and I think people are coming to visit and to live thanks to the expansion of Wi-Fi networks. Certainly, um, great cafe seating and an exciting program. Uh, I'm also interested in uh, uh, the support that you've given this whole issue with the bids in general and plazas. I want to give Tim Tompkins a lot of credit because he worked really, really hard with all the elected officials at the community boards and the city on how to deal with the plazas in Times Square. And he made sure that he involved the other uh, bids so that nothing that was challenging for the Times Square area and where there were changes would impact any of the other plazas. And the plaza rules uh, go into effect uh, June 20th of this year. 30 or 40 parks employees and two or 300 members of the public who are technologists. And we took the open data material on trees. Parks department employees and volunteers have been collecting all five borough data on trees, alive, dead, providing the canopy, not in the street trees, age, and so on. And all of that data was part of the civic hackathon that we were there for all day. Um, again, may not be directly related to the bid, but you should be very proud that in your area, these kinds of issues are being discussed. And then people broke into groups, and there were uh, prizes given out to particularly three amazing groups who came up with what you can do with this data that helps plan for the future in terms of street trees. And goodness knows street trees are important for a whole series of environmental health reasons. Sophisticated and committed to their community, but weren't able to get onto a community board. We had 12 in New York. We worked really hard to put them into uh, the community board, but sometimes there just isn't space. So we're gonna bring all the nonprofits in New York, Manhattan, and all of individuals who didn't get on and see if people could use board members or web expertise or other things that individuals wouldn't normally uh, find as a small nonprofit. We have 872 business improvement districts, of which we are one. The SES is the public in the public-private partnership where we throw that term around. And this bid would certainly not be where we are um, over the past decade if it weren't for the support of the agency and its very talented, dedicated staff. So please. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much, Jennifer, for that kind introduction. Um, I don't know, some guys are going to have to figure this out because uh, I, I get to vote. Okay. There you go. So I, I usually have a problem with photos because, you know, I'm a little bit tall. Uh, but certainly I'm honored to be here uh, uh, to celebrate uh, your decade worth of service. Uh, and I love the, the words that you have here in partnership and community. Uh, because that's what we strive for with our, our partnership uh, with the Business Improvement District. I also want to acknowledge Matt Gore, President Gail Brewer, who has now been at the agency for seven and a half years, but Gail has been in this fight for uh, much longer than I've been, and certainly she's been a terrific partner on a number of issues, and we continue to work together to teach public safety, so thank you to the gentleman that was there earlier, uh, and also make a positive impact in the surrounding neighborhood. But it's reached extend beyond clean and safe. And I know a lot of the business improvement districts we talk about clean and safe, uh, but you guys have engaged the community in creative ways and taken part in a broader vision for economic development in New York City. 
Uh, and I dare say you have been the leader in that. You maintain and activate one of New York City's premier public plaza. And I hear Kanye West is looking for some space to do a concert. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and, and created an exciting and welcoming environment where all New Yorkers can come and enjoy free programming and events like fitness classes, our comedy shows, no concerts. You have made significant contributions to the local businesses and workforce by organizing network receptions, business assistant forums, speaking series, and connections to tech education. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that and why it's so exciting for me. And through innovative marketing and, and branding programs, you made this area and unmistakable destination, drawing thousands of people in the, the, the work president you talked about that, um, to the local business and encouraging local residents and employees to stay longer and spend more time right here in the neighborhood, certainly you're doing in this neighborhood. As uh, Jennifer alluded to, I have been at the agency for seven and a half years, but uh, in this role for uh, a short of six months, uh, so I'm relatively, uh, actually I'm not new anymore, uh, after the first 90 days you're no longer new. Uh, had a skill set that was in demand, uh, but I also dropped out of college. Uh, and Sebastian, uh, he dropped out of college for financial reasons and was working as, as a truck driver for $10 an hour. Uh, but his love for technology drove him to enroll in one of our programs, which we heard from the private sector uh, a need for, which is web development, uh, web, more web developers. So we created a web development fellowship. It's 22 weeks uh, of training. Um, and that will launch uh, individuals in a career in web development um, and without a college degree. Today, thanks to that experience uh, and through the Tech Talent Pipeline program, Sebastian works full time at Foursquare earning over $80,000 a year. And there's a number of Sebastians that's coming through our programs right now. So certainly working with the private sector, working in the technology sector, understanding the needs of the sector, and ensuring that we create quality training programs to put New Yorkers into jobs is just uh, one of the focus that we have. We support over 220,000 small businesses. Now, a lot of it is, and I usually say, the business group and districts are sort of our uh, tentacles into different neighborhoods. And the only way we can do this type of support is through our partnership uh, with uh, this, with with this, like a partner, very important and change the way government interacts with small businesses. Believe it or not, even one of the programs as uh, part of the 30 regulations is customer service and how to interact with a small business. Uh, we've created a one-stop center so businesses can actually, if you want to be able to connect with uh, DCA, with uh, the health department, uh, with the fire department, there's one center that you can go to. We're also uh, using technology, surprise, surprise, to actually make it easier for you to get a global view of your interaction across the city. Very focused on increasing opportunities for MWBs. He's made an aggressive goal of awarding $60 billion uh, to MWBs over the next 10 years. And key to developing a diverse economy is serving the women entrepreneurs and businesses in New York City. So with the Deputy Mayor, uh, Alicia Glenn, we launched We NYC. And our goal is to support over 5,000 women entrepreneurs and small businesses over the next three years. Continue to thrive like here in the Flatiron District. It's important to look at the bigger picture and to approach small business needs on a neighborhood level. As you know, SBS runs the business improvement districts, and Jennifer talked a little bit about the stats there. We have uh, uh, 72 bids across the city, uh, but those bids actually deliver more than $127 million in supplemental services. Bids are advocates for the neighborhoods and the businesses in them and play a crucial role in ensuring our commercial borders are vibrant, well maintained for all the areas. A year and a half, can't shake it. Um, anyway, so we're going to move on now to the presentation of awards, and Greg Shanker, our chairman, is going to come back up uh, because SBS is actually the recipient of our first resolution. So I thought that would be an appropriate perspective to look at the bid. Uh, also, a bit of news I know no one is aware of, but you know, since the theme tonight was Kanye West, I want you to know that Jay-Z, that the Z stands for zoning. <laughs> so, but just to make it, you know, zoning's not let me make it simple for you. Zoning does basically two fundamental things. It shapes the form of the building, and it also determines what uses are permitted in the building. So those are the two things to keep in mind as we go forward. Uh, so before 1916, there was no zoning resolution, and 231 buildings in the district were built before 1916. 
Uh, interestingly, both the Metropolitan Light Building as well as the Flatiron Building are two key examples of buildings being built before zoning. And both of them, for a short time, were the tallest buildings in the city of New York. And also, the, the Met Life building, just to go, it was 700 feet tall, and it's also a little bit of a precursor to the tall towers that we're seeing on 57th Street. So those buildings were not the first tall buildings in the city. Um, in, uh, going on in the neighborhood. They are the ones who should be doing things as they are to kind of incur, promote conditions that make the neighborhood appealing to sanitation, security, marketing, and monitoring the never any changes that occur in every neighborhood. But more importantly, based upon their knowledge and experience, the bid must continue to determine whether these changes positively enhance the neighborhood or whether the, they, they detract from it. And that includes language changes as well. So from the bid material that I reviewed, look here at these remarks, I say that the Flatiron 23rd Street Partnership has been exemplary in capitalizing on the neighborhood's many strengths, cataloging the changes underway, and serving the neighborhood's needs. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 